Looking at the different parts of the brain is a good opportunity to clear up some of the misunderstandings that surround it. These misunderstandings about the brain are sometimes called neuromyths. For example, you may have heard of left and right brain subjects, how science and maths is all about the left hand side of the brain and how the creative arts are all about the right hand side. But this is not how the brain works and categorising people as left and right brained that just takes the confusion one step further. It is true that we have a left and right hand side of the brain and that some tasks may activate more one side than the other. Language for example will activate the left hand side more than the right. But there are also important language sites in the right hemisphere too for making meaning, understanding contexts and for generating verbs. So both left and right hemispheres are involved even in language and that means they need to work together. If we cut away part of the brain and look inside we find a very important brain region that allows this to happen. We see an information superhighway connecting the two brain hemispheres together and passing information between the left and the right sides. This is called the corpus callosum. Even the simplest of tasks like picking up your pen involves both hemispheres working together in a sophisticated parallel fashion with information passing between the hemispheres thanks to the corpus callosum. Now as well as being divided into two cortical hemispheres scientists also find it helpful to think about each hemisphere as divided into four parts or lobes of the brain. We have the frontal lobes at the front of the brain which educators are often very interested in because they are so important for conscious reasoning and also for working memory which is our somewhat limited ability to temporarily hold information in our consciousness. Behind the frontal lobes we have the parietal lobes which are important for a lot of automatic and unconscious processing of information such as when we draw together information from different senses that make up what something is. So if I said the word soup, although we may not be aware of it, this is where the taste, the look, the smell of soup all come together to make the concept of soup. At the back of the brain we have the occipital lobes which contain visual cortex, so very important for processing what we see. Odd perhaps considering that our eyes are in the front of the brain. And at the sides we have our temporal lobes, important for memory but also containing auditory cortex for processing what we hear. Now we've started talking about auditory cortex, visual cortex and there's also cortex for touch but it's important not to start thinking that there's one part of the brain for each everyday task that we undertake. And it's important also not to think that some learners prefer to use their visual cortex while others prefer their auditory cortex. These sorts of ideas have led to poor practice such as learning styles where a teacher decides that one student is an auditory learner, another student is a visual learner and then teaches to their preferred learning styles. In fact the brain is very interconnected and multi-sensory so this sort of approach cannot be justified in terms of neuroscience. In fact when we see a picture of a bell our visual cortex might increase its activity because we're processing what we see but our auditory cortex is also likely to increase its activation because of the strong association of this image to the sound of a bell. Notice by the way that I'm talking about an increase in activation not about auditory and visual cortex switching themselves on or off. All the brain is active all the time. We can all benefit from using all our senses according to the learning task at hand. Now underneath the cortex there's a range of structures which are just as important as the cortex for learning. These subcortical structures are difficult to see from the outside of the brain we will have to imagine the rest of the brain is transparent in order to see them. One of the most important is the hippocampus 
which has a key role in laying down our memories in the cortex and making them more permanent. Close to the hippocampus is the amygdala, which is an important centre in the brain for processing emotions. Its closeness to the hippocampus allows for the efficient emotional labelling of memories. Finally, there is the reward system that contains the structure shown here but also several other brain regions including some parts of the cortex. The reward system is important for our motivation, for our sense of wanting to do something. It is helpful to divide up the brain into its different parts when we're trying to understand how it works. But you'll have noticed, even from this brief introduction, that the brain is massively interconnected and no one part operates in isolation from the rest of the brain.